Hiya folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and since as far back as a couple of days ago, I've always wondered what it would be like to meet Spongebob and Patrick in the real world. So I, uh, made them. Now my plan, in as much as I ever have one, is to make as close to the characters in the show, but give them a bit more realistic look. I'm saying this at the start of the video to see if I can weed out the comments that will undoubtedly follow saying, Actually, I think you'll find that a realistic Spongebob would just be a swear sponge, and a realistic Patrick would just be a regular starfish. And I get that, but that's not really what I'm going for, because that's boring. I am also keenly aware that most realistic interpretations on the internets tend to lean towards the spooky side of things, but I want these guys to be friendly so they're both going to have great big smiles and inviting friendly faces. And what's more inviting and friendly than ridiculously oversized eyeballs practically bursting out of their face? Hi, how are you? Now I'm going to make the teeth out of some translucent clay, and once it's baked it'll have a really nice tooth-like coloring that takes a stain really well. These just get pressed into place, and then I can start building up the rest of the mouth and adding a bit more depth to the face. Normally, I would use a bit of bacon bond to lock the cured teeth in place, but I want to be able to remove them so that I can paint the inside of the mouth without worrying about painting my lovely, lovely teeth. Otherwise, it's just a case of adding strategic wormy dealies to help blend the eyes, nose, and mouth into his big, blocky head. And with the majority of the face built up, he's mostly finished, but he's still looking a bit too smooth. To fix that, I'll use my silicone shapers to add lots of little wrinkles, folds, and blemishes to his otherwise flawless skin. Then I can use varying sizes of ball styluses to stab lots of holes into the rest of his head to give him those patented SpongeBob sponge holes. Finally, to texturize the flat surfaces a bit, I'm just gonna smack him around for a while until he's nice and bumpy. Then with his face finished, I can throw him in the oven until he's nice and hard. Oh yeah, I uh, pulled his teeth out as well, so I'm sorry that you have to stare at his gummy toothless smile for the rest of the video. Fortunately, SpongeBob SquarePants has square pants, which means that all I need to do is chop a block of clay down until it's an appropriate size, then I can add the dividing line between the pants and the shirt, and then stick some little pant legs in place. Then I can add some wrinkles to the pants before adding the belt and the necessary belt related details. Finally, before it goes in the oven, I want to flare out the bottoms of his shorts so that I can fit his disturbingly skinny legs inside. Pro tip, if you're worried about drilling too far, put your finger on the other side. That way you know you've gone too far when it hurts. Otherwise, the wires get wrapped in clay and the legs get shaped until they're shapely. His feet start as clay kidney beans that get smooshed onto the exposed wire, then the whole half a sponge band gets mounted onto a block. This makes it easier to shave the shoes before getting started on his fancy white dress shirt. I'll start by wrapping the torso in a thin layer of clay before adding little bits of clay that will act as the wrinkles in the shirt. Then I can carefully smooth out the edges until it starts to look like an oversized collared shirt that's been stuffed into a pair of too tight pants. The collar is a couple of scalene triangles and the tie is a tie shaped length of clay with a little knot smooshed in place. Now his upper arms are still sleeved, so I'll roll up some little balls of clay and smoosh them into place on the side of his head before baking them to make it easier to handle while I attach the wire for his arms. Then I can cover the arms in clay and stick them to the head to get started on the final manual details. Like I said at the start, I want these guys to be inviting rather than horrifying, so I figured Sponge Robert would be hands on hips, giving a nice supportive thumbs up. And all that's left to do is attach the sponge to the square pants and we're ready to get started on Patrick. Patrick is decidedly larger than Robert, so to save the cost of clay equal to the GDP of a small nation, I'm going to be building up the body with a copious amount of aluminium foil. Then I can cover that foil in a thin layer of cos clay, add his cone-shaped head on top, and then start covering everything with a thicker layer of Sculpey. 
Then once everything is nice and smooth, I can stab some holes for his eyes and squish some big clay ovals in place. These are cured beforehand so that they keep their shape while I work on everything else. Same as Spongebob, I'll start by carving out his big friendly smile before adding the facial details like eye bags, wrinkles, and skin folds. Now there isn't a whole lot going on with Patrick to help give him a bit more of a realistic look, but I figured if he's a starfish then he's going to need some kind of starfish bumpy skin. To that end, I'm going to make a little texture roller out of clay so that instead of adding 10,000 little balls and blending them in, I can just roll the roller and end up with a nice, kind of horrifying starfish texture. Then I'll add some big gummy gums to his mouth so that I can squish some little wonky teeth in place. To make his legs, I've stuck some wire into the bottom of his body so I can attach some tiny tubes of clay that will act as his legs. These get texture rollered, and then I can start making his surf shorts. I'll wrap his torso with a long, flat piece of clay, and then using my clay shapers, I'll add the band that runs around the top half before adding smaller, flat pieces of clay that will work as his pant legs. I'll blend these into the main body, and then I can finally add some wrinkles and folds. It was at this point that I'd realized I'd overlooked one of Patrick's most important features, his belly button. With that glaring error fixed, I can get to work on his arms. I'll start by jamming some wire into his torso, then covering it in clay. Now I originally started with some defined muscular arms, but quickly scrapped that idea in favor of long, definitionless appendages with little happy mitts on the end. And in keeping with the friendly, welcome to the ocean theme, I figured Patrick ought to be giving a friendly wave. Finally, the last thing to do is give his arms a quick once over with a texture roller and I can get started on the painting. Once he's been primed white, I can give the majority of Spongebob a healthy yellow coat. Now he is a bit too cheerful, so I'll add a top coat of very thin brown to bring the vibrance down a bit. I'll also allow it to pool into the wrinkles and creases to add some shading and give him a nice worn out look. Then I can paint his mouth with a dark pink and add some shading with a thin terracotta before getting to work painting his shorts brown and his belt and shoes black. I've gone over his socks and shirt with a white base coat and I'll add some edge highlights with a little bit of grey. Then I can reattach the tip of his tie that I snapped off while manhandling him before painting it a bright red and giving it a lighter pink shading. Then the last thing to do is paint his eyes. Now I had originally planned on giving him great big pupils but decided the uncomfortably small pupils help sell the more realistic look. So I'll use a combination of small ball styluses and a paintbrush to make some nice round creepy blue pupils before adding some barely noticeable pink veins around the edge. Finally I'll coat the eye in a UV resin to give it a wonderfully horrible eyeball gleam. And with everything else finished I can finally reattach his teeth. And I don't know if it's better or worse with the teeth. Anyways, it's time to paint Patrick. Hello. He'll get a nice base coat of a dark starfish pink that I'll allow to dry fully before recoating in a lighter, also starfish pink. Then I'll give the whole body a quick misting of isopropyl alcohol, which will cause the still wet top coat to separate, leaving me with an interesting splodgy pattern that was entirely planned and totally not a happy accident. Then I can go over all the creases and skin folds with a darker terracotta to add some recess shading before getting to work painting his board shorts. He's got a couple coats of puke green with some lighter green highlights along the edges before adding the purple... uh... shamrock? Maybe? Then his eyeballs get the same ball stylus pointillism and pink veiny treatment before a top coat of resin to finish them off. I decided not to add the eyebrows because I liked how this looked, but I will add the teeth because I don't want to die without any regrets. Otherwise, I'll give both sets of teeth a bit of color by staining the clay with a brown wash. And with that, these guys are finished, and all we need to do is make something for them to stand on. I'll mix up some plain old aquarium sand and a bit of tile grout before adding a healthy dollop of Mod Podge. 
This will get mixed together and applied over my round MDF base. A bit of painter's tape will help keep it in line with the edges and then I can figure out how Bob and Pat will stand. I considered doing the tried and true butt to butt stance but decided it wasn't friendly enough and instead figured they should both be facing the same way in a stance that one of my patrons described as the older couple down the street every time you take the trash out. Finally I'll shape the sand around the feet to make little sand dunes, remove the painter's tape and paint the base black. Then it's on to the glamour shots. I hope you enjoyed this one as I can't imagine a more friendly couple of fellas. Speaking of friendly fellas, a big shout out to my newest patrons, Danny Duda, Nick Provenzano, Mason Buchanan, Crow, Felting Fandom, Mason Bree, Captain Plunder, Chris oh. Coon, Aubrey Joe, The Wawesome, B.R. Dutcher, Augstorn, Manerial Rotcap, Gummy Bear, Hardvik Housechild, Small Warrior 1258, MGSF44, Dr. Jackie, and Jasper Bangs. You are the spindly yellow legs that hold this spongy head of a channel up. As always, if you like this video, then hit all the buttons. I put out a new video every week, except for the weeks where I don't. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>